Hello, I'm Duncan Moss and I'd like to welcome you to my latest video blog. Uh, today I'll be talking about the album Magia, which was from 1974 um, from, by uh, Mike uh, Magia, who is Paul McCartney's younger brother. And Paul helped him out um, with the album, producing it, and they wrote many uh, songs together. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, just uh, used to uh, change his name to Mike McGear, just as a stage name, uh, because uh, the Beatles uh, by 1964 were getting, were just massive, and he uh was about to go professional with his group the scaffold uh which was a singing uh poetry uh comedy uh group very successful in their own right and i think he just thought that maybe the mccartney thing might uh be a double-edged sword uh and he and his brother Paul were very, very, uh, very, very close. Uh, I know they got badly stung when they were when they were children, um, uh, and th this album um, is the set. Paul, it was uh, Mike's second album. The first one being Woman. Um, it's it's an absolute delight. It really is brilliant. And Paul brought along uh, his band Wings, which is just uh, that's with uh, his wife, Linda Danny Lane, and a newly acquired guitarist, uh, Jimmy McCulloch, uh, who, who would contribute very much uh, to Wings over the next few years. And uh, the album was recorded uh, at Strawberry uh, Studios in Stockport. And uh it basically came about because uh, uh paul had written um song uh called leave it which uh he given to mike and mike had recorded it and it was just a standalone single uh i don't think the the i think they had a b-side um they were not sure what to do with it and they uh, um, uh, paul had a chat with his in-laws uh, about the single being released in america and they said it was a super record but they suggested that they may it was an album was made and that would be the single from well, one of the singles from the album i don't think in the states they particularly like standalone singles anyway um anyhow that was recorded uh leave it was recorded in 1973 with old uh wings drummer uh denny sewell who who soon left um th there would be another drummer for the ma majority of the sessions uh, i can't remember what the gentleman's name was uh maybe you have to come come to me i've done some notes uh but as usual, it looks like Picasso's had, had, a, had a hand in it. Um, it it's a, a, a super album. This is the uh, the cover. This is the deluxe edition of the album that, that, that came out a few years ago. And I only bought it quite recently. So I think it's still a, a, available to get. Uh, that's Mike uh, uh, dressed up as Gulliver from the Jonathan Swift novel. Uh, and the famous uh, scene where he wakes up and finds the people of Lilliput have tied him to the ground. And the, the album came in a gatefold uh, sleeve. Originally, you got uh, in this edition, you get a very nice booklet with the same artwork and telling you in great detail about the tracks. Um, just loaded with lots of lovely promotional photographs. Uh, but uh, a bit of uh, uh, going about the, the, the music, um, you also get uh, a second album, uh, a second disc, or sorry, this is it, without takes and other some other songs that didn't get onto the finished album. Um, 
there's, there's a one called Let's Turn the Radio On, which is a lovely song, and, and, a, and a very long version of Leave It, where uh, Linda's uh, backing vocals are much more prominent. They turned them down a little bit for the finished single, uh, so I think just so that Mike's voice could come through. Although uh, Linda's uh, backing vocals are, as always, excellent. And Paul and Denny and Linda's vocals, uh, backing vocals, are all over the uh, the album. And there's even little bits where Paul and Mike do a, a duet. Uh, you then get uh, this very, very nice... Um, it's a uh, it's a very nice uh, interview uh, by uh, Mike from a few years ago. Comes across as a very very modest man. Uh, he has some lovely anecdotes to tell. I don't know if you want to spoil it by telling it everyone, but the ones that tickled me were a time when uh, George Harrison flashed at him. When I say flash, I don't mean flashed his headlights at him. I mean, it went, went like that <laughs> with him. And I won't spoil it by telling you the rest of the story. Uh, also, when he was performing Leave It on Top of the Pops, the he asked for a cape. He had a hat and he asked for a cape. And the BBC props department couldn't couldn't find one, so they had to go far a little bit further afield to get one. And they went to Bray Studios, where they got uh, uh, Christopher Lee one of Christopher Lee's Dracula capes. Um, so that that was uh, that was a, uh, quite quite nice. I hope the 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 single leave it. It's a. Uh, had modest chart success in the UK. It got to number 36, which means people went out and bought it, uh, but perhaps uh, it deserved better. I'll come to it in a minute. I'll go through the tracks one by one. Um, the first track is uh, Sea Breezes, which is a cover version of the Roxy Music song written by Brian Ferry. It's quite a mournful uh, song. It, it, it talks about angels having also having trouble with in love. Uh, it, it, it's very sad, but I mean, it's beautifully produced, and there's a there's a very very mournful piano and a, and a very very pleasant use of of an oboe. Uh, and that opens the album, uh, but don't think it's going to be all. Uh, sort of sadness because there's a lot of up-tempo tracks as well what do we really know um was uh, written by paul and most of the tracks were written by paul and mike together uh sometimes linda contributed and there was one track that roger mcgoff uh, uh, supplied the lyrics, uh, but Mike sang the uh, 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 sang the vocal. But uh, what do we really know? It's a very up tempo song. It's in three bits. The first uh, section is almost like it's come off the Revolver album, with George Harrison l uh, lending a hand. Um, the main then you get the main song, which is a very upbeat, boppy. Uh, song about you know what do we really know about about people what do we uh what do we know about life and probably the answer is probably not as much as we'd like to think uh but and then uh when the main song is over you get a rocky piece uh which i thought was actually from the next track but it's not uh so it, but it's a very nice way of ending the song we then go to a track called Norton, uh, which is um, a story about uh, basically a young lad at school who's very, very uh, a bit sw swatty, very good at work, and seems to be also very good at sport, uh, and gets jealousy from the other boys, it seems. And uh, he, he, he joins the army and... Uh, there's some some vocals uh, from uh, on the track. I believe that Derek Taylor is somewhere on the album. I think it's that track. 
Uh, now, Derek doesn't need any introduction or any Beatles fan or uh, because uh, he was worked for the Beatles um, in the early days and then he went over to America to work for the Beach Boys for about three or four years and then he came back uh, to the Beatles. He got back uh, <laughs> to the Beatles and um, he his job was a very difficult job at the end when the Beatles broke up because he had he basically was a very very mature and sensible um, interview by uh, with the press about what was going on and he he, he did a very good job um, and, uh, but uh, Norton is uh, I think we can all identify with someone at the school maybe you were someone like like him uh, I wasn't because I was too thick <laughs> um, then we've got in track four we've got leave it uh, with the most uh, blistering uh, saxophone solo from a chap called Tony Coe uh, which is prominent right through through the the, the, the song. There's uh, on the uh, the DVD interview you get uh, the promotional uh, clip that uh, Mike did in a in a sort of stately home with a very beautiful and very very slim girl running all over the place in a flowing dress. Um, he also did a, a promotion uh, on video. Um, uh, which never got shown again that, that that's on YouTube and he comes across with, with a very strong personality and uh, he comes across very, very um, as a person who uh, perhaps uh, deserved to be in the public eye a bit more uh, then we've got a song called Have You Got Problems uh, number five which is a boppy rocker very very uplifting and uh, then we've got a, a track called the casket and this is uh this is uh paul mccartney writing with uh with lyrics with lyrics by roger mcgoff and um it's a very atmospheric uh track a bit mournful a bit going looking back into time almost with the talks about hermit crabs uh running for safety uh when children are coming down from the hills i presume children being what they are they probably uh took the hermit crabs and I don't know did something unpleasant to them I, uh, I, I don't know maybe maybe I'm being very morbid maybe the children were very nice to the hermit crabs i don't know uh but it's it's a very mournful uh song and it has uh pipes uh played on it uh um uh, one of the uh the the chieftains uh played these these beautiful pipes on on the the song which, which gave it a, a great deal of atmosphere and uh, mike uh, tried to do the vocal like the poet jake uh thackray who is clearly someone who a poet who he had great respect for and we then got um what i think is one of my favorite track it's rainbow lady could have been a follow-up single um in the uh scheme of things but it wasn't uh which is a shame um i think that's written by paul and mike uh then uh, number eight we've got simply love you which is a slow love song uh again uh written by uh paul and mike uh a lovely song could have been the b-side to rainbow lady would have been a very nice uh acquisition to a single collection uh, number nine we've got a uh, slightly rocky um it's called giving uh giving greece a ride a sort of rock song about driving uh i think there's a sound effects of an accident uh, happening um sort of i i haven't known the track well enough to know the outcome who got hurt or anything hopefully nobody uh <laughs> And then at number 10, we've got uh, The Man Who Found God on the Moon, which sort of reminds me a little bit of the track from London Town, uh, the, uh, what was it, the uh, Morse Moose and the, the Great Goose and the Morse Moose. 
Oh, I feel like my brain. I'm sorry, the heat is just. Uh, it's a it's a long track with a with a sort of story behind. It's got Buzz Aldrin uh, uh, vo vocal on it, and uh, another guy. Um, uh, oh goodness. Uh, yeah, Robert Dougal, who was, uh, many of you will remember, was a, a BBC News reader. Uh, as I say, I, I, Derek Taylor might be on that. I, I couldn't find him, but he's certainly somewhere on the album. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice song, uh, quite long. I, a nice a sort of grand finale track. Uh, we've then got Let's um, a Sweet Baby which was written by Paul and Linda, and that was the B-side of Leave It. But it's not on the album. And then there's another bonus track on uh, the, this edition, uh, Dance the Do, uh, which is a very, very fun, uh, boppy uh, song, again, written by, uh, I think, by Paul and Mike. Uh, so... Uh, Oh yeah, the drummer, the main drummer of the album, his name was Jerry Coe. Uh, and uh, as I say, we've got backing vocals from Paul, Linda and Denny, uh, Denny Lane, and Jimmy McCulloch, who had just joined Wings. This is, I suppose this must have been his first major assignment uh, before they started uh, working on Venus and Mars. Um, well, um, if you're a Beatles uh, or a, uh, a fan or a fan of the Scaffold, uh, Mike's other uh, Mike's group, and a fan of Wings, well, this has been known, perhaps a little unfairly, as the Lost Wings album. Well, it is. Wings fans will enjoy it, but it, they never. But Wings don't dominate. Uh, Mike sh shines through. Uh, as himself uh, very very well and uh, I was looking to see uh, what other albums are available um, from the scaffold and it seems very at the moment very little of their work is available on CD which is rather a, a shame that needs to be rectified surely um, Mike had written uh, the, the, the song with the scaffold thank you very much which when I was a little boy of about four and a half, it's one of my favourite records, and apparently it's a it was a great favourite of uh, Harold Wilson, the Prime Minister, and uh, the Queen Mother. Well, there you go. You know, um, that and it, and it is uh, it's a it's a jokey song, but it's got some really good harmonies on it. Uh, uh, Mike is definitely a very talented man in his own right and the, these two interviews that he does on the the, the 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 as it does on the dvd uh he comes across as as uh humorous uh um not cut but not cocky and uh clearly a very nice guy i'd love to meet him and uh, i think he did something with the scaffold this year i'm not not sure uh but i'd pay money to go and see them and I'm sure many people would. Um, as I say, the album with this lovely cover was. Uh, Mike was very upset because it, when it, the Warner Brothers released it on uh, in America, it was with a different cover, and I don't think it had the Gulliver thing. Or it, uh, it certainly it wasn't in a gatefold sleeve like it was in the U in Europe. It was just a one one sleeve and I think he he felt upset about that uh, don't know why they do these things um, record companies but uh, well, there we go but it really is a super super album and as I said and the second disc well that's got lots of um, out, uh, outtakes and uh, it has a, a blistering sort of seven or eight minute version of uh, Leave It uh, uh, with, as I say, with Linda, a, a stronger presence on backing vocals from Linda. There's also a lovely song uh, called Let's Turn the Radio On, which is, was a, a Mike McGear 
uh, composition he did on his own, and as a few others that he did on, on his own that would have made, I think it would have shame they would perhaps didn't release more singles from the album, say three or maybe even four, and put these bone these uh, tracks that didn't get on the finished album as B sides, could have. Uh, given uh, Mike a little bit uh, the chance of, of, of having making a dent in the singles chart. But uh, but the, the album did sell, and uh, it is considered uh, by uh, Mike McGear fans to be a classic. I haven't heard his earlier one, Woman, yet. Uh, having a trouble finding that. But um, it's a great um, uh, album, uh, from a very talented and underrated man. And uh, I don't know if you enjoyed this review. Uh, you might like to click like uh, or subscribe to my video channel uh, or forward this to somebody um, who, you know, is a, a Mike McGear or Scaffold fan. And uh, that'd be great. I've, uh, I have haven't waffled on too much. But if it makes you go out and have a, a little, uh, try and find the album, then I'll have succeeded. I'm not really here to have masses and masses of uh, subscribers. Don't get me wrong. It's lovely when somebody does subscribe. But I think it's more uh, really to make friends that I do the video channel rather than become rich and famous. Um, although I don't know how some people get thousands and thousands of people, of subscribers. Uh, maybe they've been around a long time. I've only, only been around for a, a, a short time uh, during these uh, Anyhow, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.